One day, Moses was out in the wilderness. He looks up in the cleft of the rock or in a high tree, and he sees a mother eagle stirring up the nest. And he sees the eaglets as they are being moved and shuffled around out further, further, further to the edge of the nest. And he grabs a pen and he begins to write the sermon to Israel. And he said, as an eagle stirs up the nest, so God will deal with Israel. The female eagle picks her mate in an interesting way. If you want to qualify to be her mate, first of all, she's picky. She's choosy about her, her mate. That would be a great lesson to learn. And she takes a stick. She puts him through a series of tests and she flies to about 15,000 feet. And she would drop that stick. And there he comes flying, chasing after her, trying to flirt with her. And she won't have anything to do with him. She drops the stick. And I could almost see her folding her wings and looking at him. And all of a sudden he realizes, oh, she wants me to pick that up. And he starts flying down. They can fly up to 200 miles per hour. And he does a nose dive and grabs that stick in midair and brings it back to her. She then goes down and gets a much larger, it moves from a stick to a log. She picks up a large branch and flies up not to 15,000 feet, but to about 5,000 feet. And when he comes soaring out there trying to impress her, she drops the bigger stick at a lower level. And that stick is racing to the bottom and he has to go even faster. And when he grabs it, it pulls him down. And he, now he's breaking a sweat. Now it's really getting tough. And just when he thinks that he's finally impressed her, she goes down and basically picks up a, a small tree. And she flies to about 500 feet. And he looks at her and she looks at him. And he knows what she's about to do. She drops it. And when she drops it, he flash takes off and goes down and grabs it. It's pulling him down. He's doing everything he can to not let it crash on the rocks. It's taking all the strength that he has. His talons, his claws are just as strong as they can be holding on to that, that huge, huge limb. The question is, what is the lesson you're supposed to learn? And and he learns a lesson that all men learn soon, that it's impossible to please a woman. Amen. No, no, let's keep moving. That's not the sermon today. Never enough. But, but here's the beauty of this. This is so important. Catch it now. It's the mother eagle that stirs up the nest where the little eaglets are. But it's the father eagle who circles and she's testing him to know that when she stirs up the nest and they go tumbling and falling and squawking about to hit the rocks that that father eagle is powerful enough is fast enough is strong enough to not let them fall and ultimately be destroyed. I want to preach to somebody today if you're tumbling and falling and the nest has been busted up and everything seems like the bottom has fallen out of your life and you don't know it looks like the rocks are getting closer and closer. You have a father who can fly faster than you can fall. And you may fall, but you will not be destroyed. You may be cast down, but you will ultimately find the loving arms of God grabbing you, rescuing you, and taking you up where you belong, so don't lose heart. He will not let you be destroyed. He will not let you crash. The problem that Moses saw in his congregation, I see in the body of Christ today and in our church sometimes. Many have nesting syndrome. A nest just gets to a comfortable place. It speaks of a comfortable place, a place of security, a place where I think I'll just kick back now. I've seen these nests. I've been to Alaska and, and in Canada, and you, you see these nests, they're huge. And 
God will bust up your nest to teach you to fly. What seems most cruel can become most beneficial in our life. And, and if you don't learn that lesson, you'll misunderstand and think that God is a cruel God. But the truth is, when he's going to take you higher, he will bust up your earthly nest. Many Christians have folded wings. They want no change. They want no challenge. They want no risk in their life. I only want security. I only want happiness here on earth. That's it. But you're called to a higher calling. A heavenly calling is on your life, not just an earthly calling. There's more to life than the house and the car and the comfort and the nest that you build. It's important, and God blesses you with it. And if he's blessed you with it, you ought to be thankful. But don't ever think that's what your life is about. It's not about earthly things, but you have a heavenly calling on your life. And until the eagle starts disturbing the nest, the eaglets will never step out into the their potential. You've got a heavenly calling. You've got wings that can lift you above the storms. Do you hear me? You're going to need this sermon. You've got wings that can lift you above the other birds. Our nest gets too nifty, too comfortable. Some of you are so comfortable in the place you're in right now that you don't even need to read the Bible. You don't even need to pray. You got all the answers, and I'm a self-made man. Like somebody said, why'd you make yourself like that? It, <laughs> but I promise you, life has a way of tearing up your little nest, and you're going to need him. You're going to need him like you've never needed him sooner or later. And, and then you'll discover the blessing of the busted nest had I not gone through it, had I not suffered. Sometimes we want to shield our family and shield our children. We don't want them to go through nothing and want for nothing and lack for nothing. But the thing that made you what you are is what you went through, the hardships and the struggles and the tears and the feeling like quitting and giving up. And now you just want to give everything to them. You need to hear this preacher. <laughs> some of those kids nest until they get back on their knees and they realize that what they were raised in was not a lie. There is a God in heaven. He does have victory for his children and I cannot make it on my own. I never would have made it if the Lord was not on my side. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know.
How you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.